For the record, this isn't a haircut either. It's just a new style I'm messing around with. You may be asking yourself, why are you styling your hair in so many different ways? Because I don't know what to do with my hair. My hair is very healthy and is very unruly. So, very infrequently do I find things that I think look good. But anyway, let's get into the video. This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel. And so, if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! discussion video on a topic that I've seen discussed a couple of different times at different points of the community, basically. Everyone has sort of their own input to put it onto it, and so this is basically going to be my little special on things as well and it all comes down to zoning in link format zones basically gameplay zones all that sort of nonsense and are we going to eventually be forced to use them and should Konami start implementing the forced usage of zoned playmats in competitive tournament play and what could basically be the reasons for against and what it could basically mean in terms of uh, like what it could be doing for you as like, a player on the competitive scene and what it means for like if you have cloth mats all that sort of stuff what variable solutions you might have things of that nature basically the entire argument comes from the fact that we're going into link format now in the next couple of days once the structure deck or starter deck rather is released to us on the 21st we are going to be entering the link era of Yu-Gi-Oh where zones actually become increased importance in terms of what goes where because of the two extra monster zones being extra zones being applied to each player because of link monsters having arrow markers that point in either which direction to unlock different zones and from actual cards like shut line and blasting fuse being column specific specifically shut line because that is a card that is coming out and is a pretty decent counter trap in terms of what its effect actually is but it is column specific and then we have the entire magic bullet archetype that is entirely column specific like there's so many things coming out in the future of the game that require a greater emphasis on columns and proper gameplay zones being respected than ever before in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Now if you're just a standard player in the community, chances are you either don't use a mat with zones on them, you use a cloth mat like a spell ground or a gym play mat or something like that, or you end up using a Konami mat that doesn't have zones on it, or you use a mat that has zones on it but just don't pay any attention or any mind to the zones in any way, shape, or form, because historically in the past it hasn't really mattered that much. It's mattered a real like large amount in terms of like technical play in terms of the game state being recognized but it really didn't actually matter that much in terms of an actual practical gameplay sense until recently because of cards like Shutline, because of Link Monsters, because of all of that. The problem comes from if you are playing on a mat that does not have zones on it you have to very actively communicate with your opponent on what card is where, specifically in what zone, what column, all that sort of stuff. You have to be very verbal with you and your opponent if there are no zones on either of your play mats. Now, normally this wouldn't be that big of an issue because players of a certain caliber are usually capable of communicating with their opponent on some form of actual, you know, good terms and good basis, asking if a card was set this turn or last turn or something like that, which card was the new set. Those are common like questions that usually get asked amongst Yu-Gi-Oh players when you're playing a game with them. So, obviously you would just add what zone is that in to the common questions being asked. And if you have a reference point like a center point on a mat like on a spell ground, you usually have the little circle icon in the middle. If you're able to have a reference point from which you can base off of where your zones are, that shouldn't be that big of a problem. Now, it could very well become a problem in the essence of rule sharking, because certain players are always out to get an advantage over their opponent in any way possible, whether or not it is very like cordial in terms of good sportsmanship, or whether it's even allowed by the rules. 
If you're both playing without zoned playmats, even if you are identifying a center point, your opponent could very easily shift things around and basically say, no, it's not in zone 2, it was in zone 1. It's further away from the center point, or things like that. Like, it's very easy for someone to try and manipulate knowledge of the game state to cause rule sharking to be a very possible threat. So, like what Konami has done in the past, Konami of the TCG specifically, I could see them implementing a forced usage of zoned play mats when in tournament play. It's something that's unfortunately probably a necessary solution just because some people are scumbags and some people like to try and cheat. I'm not saying all players are cheaters, but some very much are so. There are some players that literally have no sense of moral code in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! and those are going to be the people that cause the problems. In the past, we've had something similar occur where Konami of the TCG made us have a forced change to how we played the game, and that was in the late 2013 period when Harpies were a deck that could be used and Magical Hats was a card that could be used in the Harpy deck. This was September 2013 format, Dragon Rulers, Spellbooks, Harpies was a viable deck, Water was a viable deck, all that sort of stuff just to give you an essence of the time frame. Konami of the TCG made a policy update saying that because it was not specified that you could use extra deck sleeves that were of a different type from your main deck or side deck, that you had to use the same sleeves for your extra deck, for your main deck, and for your side deck. If you were playing with Player's Choice Whites on your main deck and side deck, you had to have your extra deck and Player's Choice White sleeves as well. And that was because of Magical Hats' existence. Because Magical Hats would shuffle potential extra deck monsters face down with other cards from your deck, and it would be very easy to identify. Now, since then, that has been basically changed to where if you have a situation like that come up, you just take the card out of the extra, the different sleeve, and then you put it into a sleeve that matches the ones that you're using for your other sort of nonsense that causes it to be mixed up and randomized. But the essence of Konami forcing us to use zone playmats was there. It was very much something that did happen in the past. Konami of the TCG forced us for a period of like two months to play with the same sleeves on our extra deck as were on our main and side deck. And they did not give very much leniency to you if you broke that guideline. They were giving game losses out at regionals for if your stuff didn't match. It was all sorts of nonsense and rigmarole. Now, they amended the policy documents to change it to where your extra deck was specifically stated as it could be in a different type of sleeve, but they have to be all of the same sleeve, so you can't mix colors of sleeves on your extra deck and all that sort of nonsense. But So essentially what I'm trying to use out of that example is that Konami has had to force players to abide by a certain set of rules just to maintain the integrity of the game states of certain games before. And even though there shows no indication so far in the TCG or the OCG that this is becoming a problem anywhere that might have to be done to force us to use zone play mats, it could very easily become one because of people that will like to rule shark. Now obviously straight out of the gate you could easily protect yourself from this by playing on a zone play mat yourself and then being very verbal with your opponent on which zones are in what. You could keep track of that with things like dice if they're playing on a cloth play mat like lay a die saying one, two, three, four, five, like at the edge of their play mat so that like you know that it's column one through five. Like it's very easy for you to sort of do and establish communication and that's probably going to be what I do in the early stages of this format. If I'm not playing on a mat that has zones on it, I will definitely be using either put like pins on my spell ground mats or I will just be laying out tiny dice that say one, two, three, four, five across my mat and playing things in the zones that are pointed to by those numbers essentially so there's a good established just static level of communication between me and my opponent on where my cards are and then hopefully they conform to it as well. But if you're not playing on a zoned mat and your opponent's not playing on a zoned mat you are going to have to very very actively establish communication between them on what things are where and make sure that nothing gets nudged around because even if you establish communication with your opponent on this is in zone 2 or in column 2. If they nudge it with their hand, 
they could easily just say that it's in the other zone and the other column in any instance that would benefit them and then if a judge is called over it is literally a he said he said she said argument and there's not really anything that can be done about that so I could easily see the lack of zones on playmats becoming a problem in the future and I really wish that it wouldn't <laughs> but players are going to find exploits in whatever way they can to try and win outside of their own skill set and outside of the hands they've been dealt and outside of the goodness of them as a player basically outside of how good they are as a player they're going to exploit any and everything they can do some players will rule shark and if this happens in a large amount of cases, then Konami might just say, you know what, you're playing with mats with zones on them if you're in a tournament or else. And that's ultimately just the problem. And that's ultimately going to become a problem that needs to be addressed. As things progress into link format, things are destined to get worse before they get better. It's one of those things that just like, People by nature are greedy. People by nature are going to try to do everything they can to win. If some of those methods are less than, you know, sportsmanlike, I, if I don't get caught, I still won on the match slip. So, like, it could very easily become a problem in the future if zones are not on playmats, and Konami could very easily force us to use zoned playmats and honestly at that point I believe that they should anything that makes it easier to maintain the integrity of the game state is going to be something that's better for the game rather than not I mean the whole spell ground thing and the whole gym playmats thing that kind of, it kind of sucked to lose access to spell grounds but like gym playmats and ophidium game mats are capable of printing zones on their mats anyway if they wanted to because they have custom printing processes so you'd still be able to use cloth playmats but, like, I would rather have the game state being properly represented in the maximum amount of integrity possible than have a possible thing go up to chance like that, especially with cards coming out like Shutline, with archetypes coming out like the Magibullet archetype that you know Konami is going to want to force upon us because they want to sell product, they want us to use these cards. So... The best way for them to facilitate the usage of these cards is to make it easier for players to maintain game states in which they can be properly activated and utilized. There's always the communication factor between you and your opponent on what things are where, but unfortunately some players are less virtuous than others and those ones are going to be the ones that try to take advantage of this new system where they can move things around and do things like that and those are going to be the players that ruin it for all of us so zones in link format are you going to be needing to use them on your map you probably aren't going to need to it's probably not going to be something that's mandatory it could very easily become something that's mandatory if it starts becoming a problem in which case konami should very very much so force us to play with zone mats if things start becoming a problem but other than that, you shouldn't need to straight out of the gate. As long as you want to basically protect yourself, you can play with zone mats on your own play mat, or you can just establish a very, very pinpoint amount of communication with your opponent. But the problem with that is that every time you're asking your opponent where something is, that's time being taken away from playing the rest of your round out, so there's actual things there as well. Like every action you perform that's not playing the game is taking away from the amount of time you have to play the game in your allotted 40 minutes per round. So there's all these sorts of different things that could come into play in terms of why we could eventually see a shift into mandatory playing on zoned playmats, and basically that just... That's all I really wanted to discuss. A lot of people are making videos saying, no, nah, all you have to do is establish communication and you'll be fine. That's great in an ideal world, but some people are scumbags. This is like a law of nature. Where there are good people, there have to be bad people. Or else there is nothing to judge that people are good by. Where there is light, there must also be dark. It's a very, very easy concept to understand. Where there are good and virtuous players, there are going to be players that are scumbags and try to take advantage of the system until they have every check put in place against them to where they cannot take place advantage of the system. So that's all I really want to talk about today. Let me know what your opinions are in the comments down below. I definitely think Konami at some point should enforce the usage of zoned playmats if things start becoming a problem. Now, 
if people can just play like regular functioning human beings and not scumbag each other and keep communication up between each other of what's where, then fantastic. Amazing. I will keep using my spell ground. But if I have to make a switch to a zone play mat, I will not feel bad for it in the slightest because I will be playing on a mat that maintains the integrity of the game state and I know that I'm not going to get dicked over. In short, basically. But anyway, like I said, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below as always. But anyway, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for watching the ramble and all that sort of nonsense. Let me know if you like these styles of videos and stuff where I literally just put no graphics or anything like that. I just literally talk to a camera and say my thoughts on certain things in the game. If you like that sort of thing, then perfect. I'll keep doing them. If you like the really, like, massively edited videos with the card reviews, let me know if you like those too. I mean, shit. But anyway, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links, as always, are in the description to my Facebook fan page and Patreon page. If you want to support the channel directly and help some future content I wanted to do come into fruition a bit faster, show how you like the things that I'm doing, show, like, all the sorts of, like, support that you want to show for the channel, that sort of stuff, and also get some things back in the form of the reward tiers, then you would definitely have my eternal gratitude if that is something that you wanted to go check out and possibly consider contributing to. It would help out a ton. But anyway, other than that, I don't really have anything else to say in this video. Like I've already said many times, let me know what your thoughts are on this instance and this uh, topic in the comments down below. But as always, guys, thanks for watching again. Thanks for your time as usual, and take care. I will see you in the next video.